You won't believe what actually showed up. So not too long ago, I'd said that I want to try 3D printing with this channel. And that 3D printers are expensive. And then my mom caught wind of it. So she basically just threw money and said, go buy one. I don't know how that conversation happened, but here it is. Dude, what? Okay, so we have unboxing instructions, apparently. It's Ooh, bubble wrap. Okay, so I got to unboxing this thing and I totally forgotten to turn the camera on. And I had already opened two of those boxes that were sitting right here. And in those were, what's this? The power cable, the USB cable. This is a USB type B apparently. Nobody uses those, why are they still using those? Oh wait, this is an older model printer, Never mind. And then this cable, I have no idea where this thing is supposed to be. It looks like a four pin fan, but it's got some extra bits sticking out of it. So, hmm. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so I have the print head and everything. Well, it's not totally screwed down or anything. I just want to show you this. But this thing just quite literally sits on top of this, this part. Actually, let me take this off and show you guys. That's quite literally it. There's two slots on this thing and two screw holes. And there are these uh, opposing screw holes. As you can see, there's one here, one on the other side, and they just simply line up. I mean, if that's all it takes to put together a 3D printer, this has gotta be the easiest thing I have ever built. Granted, most of it came pre-assembled, So the instructor manual only had unboxing instructions. It doesn't tell you anything about how to level this plate. Luckily, I know how to do that. Although, this is a 24 pound sheet of paper. I wonder what the extra thickness is gonna do to that. But you know, let's give it a try, see what happens. So I probably need to plug this thing in before I try to uh, level the bed. It's probably like a wizard in there or something. But before you do that, you gotta change the voltage. Now that's an interesting one to see. Press M when level. What M? There is no M. I wonder what firmware this is running. Alright, so I'm going to have to freehand this part because the tripod gets in my way, but it's time to load the filament. Now I've already loaded one of these uh, last night. I did a little test print. It's the uh, the white filament color, and I just dropped the red one. Uh, okay, let me try that again. So the way this works is that it's going to get done heating anytime now, and then on top, there it goes. And you'd hear the motor wanting to start pulling this thing in. And it kind of just draws it in on its own. There's a little, little geared motor in there pulling all this stuff in. And it should come out the right extruder. There it is. It's dry by the time it uh, hits the bottom of the build box, so it'd be fine. Then, press OK, and that's that. Okay, so the first print didn't actually go anywhere. In fact, all it did was sit in the corner and extrude a whole lot of, well, yeah. What I did with that file was I sent it through Cura uh, generated G-code file from there, threw into RepG, and converted that into a uh, X3G file. It clearly didn't like that and gave a pretty bad earthquake effect when trying to clear the build platform. 
this time I just threw the model directly into RepG and then had it generate the G code from there and then just from that G code generate a 3XG file from it or XG3 or whatever file this thing is using. So yeah, so we'll try another print uh, using that method. At least this time it's not extruding a whole lot of everything this time. Unlike that one. We'll see how it goes. That is going to be the strangest sounding thing I've ever heard. Now, setting this thing up was fairly easy. Trying to fidget around with the files to get something that this thing can read, that was a little more difficult than necessary. But in the process, I realized something. I have no idea how to 3D model. <laughs>